So hello and welcome to another Smelly Cat video. This one is just a quick review video of some filament I've been working with or testing lately and um, thought I'd just put up a little review of it. Show my support for the company, being a UK based company and a, a new startup. So I've been working and trying this 3D Tamora filament. I bought this off of Amazon, you can buy this off of Amazon. And I believe it's now live on their store online as well. Um, this is actually called Roots My Fist. It's pretty much my ideal purple. And this is actually probably now in my top top three favourite filaments. Uh, Colour and performance for how well it prints. As long as you print this at the 200 degrees on the hot end that it recommends on the box uh, I haven't had any problems printing this other than the spool and you will see in the next part of the video I will explain to you about the spool and a couple of issues I just had with my um, any cubic printers but that was quickly resolved by the company they got back to me gave me a couple of solutions so I will explain those in the next part of the video which shows you what I've been printing but it's a uh, Spool, so it's fully recyclable. It's not a plastic one like a lot of the uh, cheap Chinese manufacturers use. It's fully recyclable there with a lovely logo on the on the side. As you can see, it's got the oh this side, it's got the Union Jack on there. This is a UK company, and also this filament is produced in the UK. So it's another reason why I like to support them. I like to support small businesses and UK businesses. So, I will pop to the next part of the video, show you what I've printed, show you how I got on. I highly recommend giving them a try yourself. You can look on Amazon or on their online page. Um, I'm looking forward to trying another colour filament. Hopefully, I'd like to try maybe try to try some apple green or something next. But definitely loving this filament so far. So, it's a thumbs up from me. Give it a try. And uh, thanks for watching the video. So here it is, here's the um, 3D Tomorrow. There it is, look at that beautiful colour. Here it is printing at the moment. So I'm just making some brackets for my uh, fibre laser and also a large extraction adapter. Um, making slate tiles gives us quite a lot of uh, dust. Uh, so I'm making an extraction adapter that's going to reduce down to a smaller pipe. The smaller pipe is going to go down near the laser. But as you can see, it's printing away lovely. I have been doing quite a few prints in this now. What I thought I would just do is filming on this part is I had some issues with this when I first tried to print it. In fact, the uh, the reel actually fell off the printer itself. Um, you see a bit of wobble in there. The reel, the reel fell off because the reel if you can see it's very tight fit to these any cubic you've got you've got virtually nothing in there they're very tight to these any cubic spool holders um, obviously most spool holders as you have down here on your uh, end of three etc they are round and they they've got quite a lot of length to them so you can fit an extra wide reel on there but on these any cubics with this one over here as well on a standard reel you've got a lot of room for play left and right um, it's n was never been a problem I've never had a problem I put this reel on here this 3D tomorrow stuff um, and I was like oh that's that is tight and I couldn't get it to print it was um, the reel fell off because it was too tight, it was snagging against this uh, down the side here. Um, so I contacted 3D Tomorrow, said you might want to look at this. Uh, I can't print it on any of my any cubic printers. So they offered me two options. One, they sent me the files to print and modify the spool holder, which was good of them. Um, as you can see, I didn't I didn't go down that route in the end. I, I will go down that route, I think, because I, I don't like these spool holders anyway. They cause too much friction. I'd much rather have a 
cylindrical spool holder on there to reduce friction and if it could just be a little bit longer that would reduce any errors. You can see there's quite a bit of tension now. <clears throat> it's not running through the sensor because to be honest with you most of these sensors <clears throat> don't seem worth the effort. They uh, often, they never seem to work half the time. Anyway, so the other option that he offered me, or you mentioned to me, was where is it? Somewhere around there. I think it's probably down the back there. The two retaining holes in the centre of the spool, which retain the start of the spool when it's very first wound onto the spool, onto the reel. There's two holes, and I, th I believe they're probably out at the minute. Just my luck. Uh, there we go. Let's. There we go. Let's see it. Here we go. So here's your hole here and here. That's the start of the spool right there, where they, they, they poked it through and first started uh, winding it. This would normally come out a fair bit further than that, and that was comp completely what was causing my issue. That was snagging against this side of the spool holder, and that's what made it fall off. So he said, cut it back. So I cut it right back, pretty much flush. And as you can see, I've been able to print with it. No real problems. So this is now possibly my favourite colour. It's certainly up there when I see my top three. It is a, a beautiful colour. I do love this. Feels a uh, feels a uh, very. I can't even describe it. Very like corn-like. It uh, doesn't feel plasticky. So it does work on any cubics, but beware, you will need to either cut that off or modify the spool, spool holder. I'm going to do that anyway on these, these any cubics. I've got three of them that have these spool holders on there. But it prints no problem on there. And I'll just come over and show you some uh, other prints that I've been doing as well. Right, so other prints I've been up to. Um, I don't really like printing things just for the sake of printing I don't really like printing just models I like to print um, components that are useful things that have a purpose um, so first off I have a sheet of this it's called white alumilite it's aluminium covering over perspex and it's white so I'm gonna make a whiteboard making a whiteboard to go in this room so that I can write down easier keep track of the things that I need to be getting done so good old thingy verse I went on there looking for find one that I've already taken the uh, supports out I went on there looking for whiteboard holders and I've got these two screws put one per corner it goes back in there so you'll put one of these on each of the corners of the Illuminite like that. And then I can uh, turn the piece of that scrap Illuminite into a whiteboard to go on the wall rather than buying one. So I printed four of them. They were one of the first things I printed. Four of them in this new filament. They came out decent. Also I printed this is AAA battery holder. I did print this on. Did I print this on a raft? I don't. I, I think I printed it with a brim actually. Um, but useful. Keep my batteries in that. So there's that. Then I printed these are all off Thingiverse as well. Um, I did actually take the clips off of the battery ones because I found them too much. Hard. I actually broke them off here. I found them too much hard work to keep getting. Them open and closed I didn't really need them on there but you can see it's, a, it's got a real nice shimmer to that PLA nice finish that one's just a double A battery holder literally clips in print the two parts it's got quite a nice engagement on the hinge clips in there's a double A battery holder so I printed that 
once again, like I say, useful. And then this is actually just a rugged case. Uh, I just like these little cases, but it is quite stiff to get that off. Just an empty little case. Don't know what's going to go in there. Maybe nozzles, I don't know. But they're still useful. I like to print useful things. So overall, I've been, um, yeah, I'm really impressed with this filament. Uh, 3D Tomorrow, as I say, is a UK brand, it's, and it's the filament is made in the UK, and I do like to support UK businesses where possible, um, especially small businesses. So I hope to be using some more. I'm going to test out some more of their filaments, maybe try a different colour, but this amethyst blue is, is definitely in the top three, if not top two, of my favourite filament colours so far. And um, yeah, I'm really happy with it. I will uh, post up a link to where you can um, get some of this if you want to give it a try yourself. Amazon, you can go on Amazon and buy some, um, buy um, 3D Tomorrow filament through Amazon. That's how I bought this. This came through Amazon. I just like using my uh, Amazon Prime so I can get some next day delivery. But I've had no issues other than that spool issue. It's a great filament. I probably should make the... Uh, Bottom layer a bit thicker there, you can see. Also, it's generally because when I print with a brim, I cut the brim off with a knife. You can see it's fine on that one. I cut the brim off with a knife, and then I I, I go around the edges quickly with a blowtorch, and then just smooth it with my finger. Sometimes <clears throat> keep it there a little too long, but. Loving this uh, filament. Give it a look and uh, thanks for watching the video. I'm going to do another video shortly on I'm just making a new microwave fractal burning Lichtenberg device. So I'm just going to give you a quick little update on uh, how that's going. So come back, check out the videos again and thanks for watching.